Goodness. Okay. Hey, John. Hello, TGIF. You know, we were giving Melba more flowers yesterday, but I see you brought your own flowers today. Okay, you can't, you can't. I feel like a gospel singer. That's what I feel like. <laughs> but this is a little, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay, all right, there we go. We, we got it together. It's just one of those, um, cause Phyllis is like, what in the world is going on? It's, 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 it's form fitting everywhere. Look, there we it's got a mermaid fit to it. It's got a mermaid fit too, except it's not a mermaid in the daggone <laughs> outfit. Y'all, I got it, okay, now I'm good. Did I say, hey family? Yeah. When I said, this, this fog, what do they call it? When you, you know, you're going through the hormonal stuff, that brain fog thing. Oh my goodness, I'm not, like, I'm just forgetting stuff all the time. So I say, hey, family, right? <laughs> hey, family! <laughs> oh, my gosh! I just wanted to make sure. All right. You know what, y'all? I got some feedback from a few viewers about a show that we did this week. And uh, apparently, I made some of the older men a little upset because we were talking about Milf Manor 2, the new re the reality show that's coming on for their second season, where women are dating fathers and sons. And I talked about how I preferred dating older men, except for a few drawbacks. Take a look. It's something about their the older man is sexy, but you just gotta worry about him falling asleep mid-conversation. <laughs> that older man will fall asleep. Oh, you gotta worry about them old men that wanna keep complaining about all the aches and pains, arthritic pain. <laughs> Always complaining they can't do stuff because their knees is hurting all the time. And them older men that want to leave their teeth all over on the sink, want to leave the teeth here, the teeth there. So, <laughs> this said some of the, uh, boy, when I tell you the comments I was getting, oh my goodness, on social media. So one older gentleman called me, and it's actually my friend, comedian Jonathan Slocum, okay? And he said, Sherry, a lot of us older men are really getting tired of you making fun of our arthritis and our teeth. <laughs> and he said, First of all, he said, I will not fall asleep mid-conversation, and I got my own teeth. <laughs> and he also went on to say, he said, Sherry, if I take you out, that AARP card is about as good as an American Express black card. <laughs> That's what Jonathan Slocum said. <laughs> and he also said, he said, I get a senior citizen discount, so I get to go to all the movies for free. <laughs> And he said, and when we go to a restaurant, we get a discount. He said, this AARP card means something in these streets. That's what he said. And then he said, we get discounts on flights, so I can fly you to a lot of places with this card. So, and, and then he went to Cap, and, and, and to, be, um, to, to be clear, Jonathan Slocum, he is engaged to a lovely woman, but he was trying to make this point. He said, and making love ain't bad. He said, the young ones, they're like Energizer bunnies. <laughs> He said, the older men are like elephants. We're big and strong, and we go slow. That's what he said. <laughs> oh, my gosh! New perspective. And then he, he said, Sherry, but the young ones, he said, also, with the young men, he said, they're not chivalrous 
like, like the older men. He said, and the young women don't require these young men to be, to have chivalry. He said, older men are the ones that will walk on the, uh, the right side of the street to protect you. He said, older men, they will open up those doors for you. And he said, older men do not like you paying for them. They pay for you. And I said, all right. All right, because I have seen young men. I have seen young men. Y'all will eat dinner, go on a date, eat dinner, get up and walk away from the table and go, what you waiting for? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I've seen younger men, more younger men walk in front of me to get in and out of the elevator. They will walk, whereas, you know, the older men will stand and wait for you to go. And don't be sitting in the car waiting for a young man to open it, because he, they, he'll be gone, and you got to lift up that door yourself. <laughs> So, to all of the older men, I'm so sorry, because I know y'all are good men, but the jokes are so funny, so they can't stop. <laughs> you gotta keep doing it. <laughs> I have to. Jonathan's really funny. We we're gonna have to get him in a laugh lounge soon. Yeah, we gotta bring Jonathan Slocum yeah, on. He's, he's really great funny. Great comic. Yeah, he's great, he's great Silver Fox. But I, w I wish y'all could see the other pictures of him. He's, he's got his swag going on. <laughs> but I gotta tell y'all, if you wear heels, in a clap, if any in here, y'all wear heels, okay? <laughs> then you know how hard it is to walk in these heels all the time. When I tell you, well, sometimes Willie Sinclair III from the Milwaukee of Sinclairs, he will put me in the highest heels, and as I walk through the door, right when the door opens up, my feet are already hurting, <laughs> right before I go through. I play myself every time I come out here to twirl, but I know beauty is in pain, and I like wearing heels, because it makes your legs look longer, you feel sexy with the heels on. Well, Oscar-winning actress Lapita Nyong'o, she's got a new hack to ease the pain of heels. So Lapita posted a video of her in heels, but she's not walking. You see, she's got somebody pulling her on a dolly to help her out. And I like this. I love it, because you see how far Lapita had to walk in her heels? I love it because Lapita has the right idea. People don't understand what women go through with this feet thing. I'm telling you, it's because men usually wear, y'all can wear like three different colors of shoes or you wear your, your tennis shoes, but they're flat. But women, we always have to wear heels for everything. And the worst part is when you are wearing heels, your feet start hurting and you gotta stand in one place or you gotta walk. Anybody ever said, how far is that walk from yeah. here to there? <laughs> like you gotta calculate. You have to calculate how far everything is, how far, that's when I go to, like, when I go to clubs and to concerts, I gotta have a seat. I need a seat. I don't stand up anymore at the bar. If I walk into a restaurant and there's nowhere to sit, I'm like, I'm going to eat at home. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's like, I'm telling you, everything around my feet, I don't know if it's because of hormones or it's just getting hot, but it seems like everything around my feet is hurting. My ankles hurt, then my corns hurt. <laughs> it's a new bunion every time I look around. It's a new bunion. I get rid of one bunion, nine grow back. I'm going. <laughs> What Willie Sinclair is so tired of me complaining. So I say, Lapita, you came up with a great idea, but you leaning over so much, your feet gonna be fine, but your back is gonna be killing you. <laughs> so you gonna be sore the next day, but I think that this is a great idea if you got two men and a dolly uh, to row you around everywhere. But I'm telling y'all, this is why I can't wait. Give me five, six, seven years, and I'm gonna be in Birkenstocks with socks. <laughs> And then I'm not even going to care. So go ahead, Lapita. I'm going I'm to try that one day. <laughs> oh, man. And I was talking to a girlfriend the other day, and she said that her parents have been together for 58 years. They are still together, still in love, which got me uh, to thinking. Because she, she, you know, she also said nobody's capable of staying together that long anymore. Um, and so I was really thinking, clap if you believe in monogamy. <laughs> okay, the majority of you do. Okay, so clap. How many of y'all clap if you think that being with one person is a thing of the past? Okay, all right, who, one person. One person clapped. I don't know who that one person... You didn't even raise your hand to clap. 
Okay, I got it. It's, you know, it's such a crazy uh, uh, debate because Shakira said the same thing in an article recently. Now, Shakira is on the cover of Marie Claire UK, and her parents have been together for 50 years, and they can't live apart from each other. But for Shakira, she thinks that monogamy is a utopia, and it's unattainable for her. And I, that made me a little sad, because I would say to Shakira that I would like her to have a little bit more hope, because when you go to the place of it's not possible, then you've given up. So, you know, but I, I understand Shakira, because she was in a relationship with the soccer star for 11 years until he was accused of cheating on her. And yeah, 11 years, and then they split two years ago. So I think that Shakira is, real, is scarred from that, and it's probably very, very triggering. So I, I, I don't think... Um, Staying with one person is a thing of the past. I wonder if it's sometimes if we just, we're living longer now than we used to. So, be, so I wonder, you know, is it, are we meant to be with one person forever, ever, forever, ever? <laughs> I don't know. Be, you know, because every time I think about an older couple staying together for 50 years, I think, wow. And then, I, but then I think about, you know, a couple being together for 50 years, they don't have to worry about what was going down in somebody's DMs. They didn't have to worry about things like OnlyFans and Snapchat and th the stuff that, that is going on now. So, but I also think, you know, with the young ones, they break up. Da -da. When you get older, it's harder to leave, I think, as you, as you get older. You can work out, you can, it, it seems like when you, as you get, as you get to a more seasoned age, you can work past cheating when you get older. Because when you're young, you always hear these girls when they're young, they go, you know what, I'm not staying. If he cheats on me, I'm gone. It's other fish in the sea. But as you get older, you like, you know what, we got these kids. <laughs> All our finances are entangled together. Then you look up and you go, I'm on your taxes, you on my taxes. Who gonna get this house? How we gonna split it? Then I gotta split, you ask questions like, I gotta split the retirement. Who's getting my retirement? Who's getting, so instead of I'm not taking any of that crap, you get together longer and you say, <laughs> you start asking questions like this. How long was the affair? <laughs> are, you, you, are you still seeing the girl? <laughs> How many times did it happen? And then that other question, did you block her number? You blocked her number? <laughs> you, you just look at things a little bit differently. Because when I, when I meet couples who've been married 50 years, 40 years, I, they've been through something. I never like taking advice from somebody who just got married three years, and now they're writing books and they're giving seminars. Like, people who've been married 40, 50 years, they've been through some things, you know? And I think, it, you know, it, those uh, people, they get to see nuances, and they understand things a little bit better. Things are not as black and white with couples who've been married a longer time or who've been together a longer time as when you're, when you're younger. So, Shakira, I don't think monogamy is a thing of the past. I just think you just have a little more hope, take some time out for you, girl, and then let love come back in and open it up with open arms. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, at least that's what I said. That's what I wrote on my bathroom mirror in red lipstick. Open it up. <laughs> Embrace it with open arms. Um, Travis Kelsey, I love Travis Kelsey, he's just like me. Travis hates getting mail at his house. He was on his podcast, New Heights, and he says that since having his address put online, he receives so much unwanted mail. He says he gets so much mail, he told the post office to stop all mail deliveries to his house. Take a look. The one thing you don't realize, uh, that when, uh, when somebody posts your house online, um, that that everybody now has your address and people just send stuff to your house. So I literally stopped getting mail to my house. Right. I had to it's, stop. I had to like literally tell the post lot. office and everybody to like stop bringing stuff to my house. But then there's some stuff that comes and it's pretty cool. Anything sent to my house, send right back to the sender. Oh, so, so Travis said that people send stuff to him. I never, people don't send stuff to me. They just show up at my house. I'm telling you, when I lived in L.A. and my first house uh, that I had gotten, when I, I had done uh, Friends and Everybody Loves Raymond, and I had finally got a little house that was mine, my neighbors knew I was an actress, so they would always bring people over to meet me all the time, or they would ride by and say, hey, and one Halloween, this is what I knew it was just bad. One Halloween, I was giving candy to people, and this is what people say. They, if they see me in front of my house, they go, oh, Sherry, you live here? <laughs> then they do that lean. You live 
of here. That's what it was. So this year, people kept sitting. And then when I did Halloween out here, I did Halloween. Uh, and I have a brownstone in Harlem. And so people, I, you know, it was funny. They would recognize me. And they go, Sherry, this, this is yours, right? <laughs> Do that lean. This is yours right here. And then they, the kid, they kept sending their kids back six, seven times. And I'm like, is your kid's case in my house? What is all these kids? <laughs> they keep coming back. So, Travis, I don't have anybody sending me stuff. They just show up. But I understand about the mail, because I don't like getting mail either. Because, but you know what? The bills got to get paid. Nowadays, you never get good mail. It's always bills. It's always a real estate person, then sold a house. It's the Chinese place around the corner. <laughs> but when tax season comes, this is what I'm waiting for, tax season, I'm in my mailbox like Whoopi Goldberg in the color purple. <laughs> Just like, just like Whoopi. It's, that tax check is supposed to come, and I'm gonna be sitting there like, anything come for me? <laughs> Poor Seely. I'm telling you. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that tax return, boy. I need to get one more year out of Jeffrey. I'm telling you. <laughs> on my taxes. Oh, my goodness. But some of the younger people here on staff, they never check their mail because they get all their bills online. Oh. But I say, you got to have some mail. You got to have something that comes to your house with your address on it so you can join Sam's Club, because they always <laughs> want. They don't let you join. You got to have a bill in your name. And, I'm, and this is why I do like getting some bills, the, some uh, mail coming to my house, because there's always an auntie or grandmother that wants to send you $20 for Christmas. <laughs> And you know when you get that $20, it always comes when you need it. When you don't have gas money, that $20. Do not underestimate a grandmother or an auntie. That $20, or you, you hungry, and you find that little crumpled up $20 in your purse, you need it. So, Travis, I'm with you. I don't like seeing the mail either, but hey, to be open. That's what I say. I wrote it in red lipstick. Be open. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. You know what I forgot to say? I wanted to say, we, we had, uh, yesterday, we had two of the housewives from New Jersey on, on the show. Margaret we, and Dolores. Margaret Josephs, I think, uh -huh. and Dolores Catania. We had them both on the show. And when I tell you, it was a hot flash reunion <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> I love these two ladies, because they were hot flashing as they were talking. And so, I think it was Margaret. She talked about the fact that she got a pellet and hurt, some kind of estrogen, testosterone pellet. They put a little slice in your butt, and they put the pellet in there. Yes, and it, it helps with hot flashes. So you're not hot flashing. And then Dolores says she got a gel, some, a patch that she puts on her arm. And I got to look, I need quicks. I'm hot flashing right now. That's why I thought about <laughs> them. When I tell these hot, I literally, I want to go, ah! It's just. The hot, this, when I tell you I want to snatch this wig off right now, <laughs> this hot flash, I don't care. And I make the studio cold in here because I'm hot flashing. But it start, it's like inside my body and it's burning up. We're going to have to keep a menopause fan on the table for you then. We're going to have to keep a yeah. fan. Yeah. We gonna, yeah, I don't need to drink no tea. I need a fan to just fan <laughs> me all over my face. Because I, I don't know if anybody else is hot flashing. You got your fan right there. See, she got her fan right, right there. You see the lady and with the brown hat on? She got her. The lady in the second row with the brown hat got a fan right there. <laughs> when I tell you, <laughs> if you know, you know, that hot flash is no joke. I'm telling you, I need somebody. I don't know if I need estrogen, if I need testosterone. I don't know what, if I, what I need, but I need something because it's going, I'm going crazy over here. You hot flashing, Phyllis? Huh? <laughs> 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 Phyllis is hot flashing. She didn't even know what I was talking about. It's the brain fog. It's the brain fog. That's what I'm talking about. It's that brain fog. Everything is, you know, over. I don't know. I go from hot flashing to horny, then horny to hot flashing. I don't know what is wrong with me. You know what? We got a great show for you today. <laughs> because up next, Emmy winner and co host of The View, Sonny Hostin, is here. <laughs> We'll be right back. So we have 
family here today because my first guest is one of my sisters from The View. Now, she's not just a TV host. She's also a lawyer and a New York Times bestselling author whose latest novel is called Summer on Highland Beach. Please welcome Sunny Hostin. <laughs> Tell you though, I need two things. What do you need? I need Lupita's dolly. Okay. And I need. But you that. got the heels on today. Yes, I need that woman's fan. I'm telling. Okay. Don't it? Okay. Do you get hit with the hot flashes? I'm sudden? getting one right now. I'm telling. I don't know Ooh. what it is. It just and it's it's like this internal fire right inside. I'm, huh? A flame. A flame. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I, am. I, well, I love it when, when people come hot flash with me. This yeah. is so nice. I'm with you. I'm I, with you are you. so with me. And you know, you were with me. You, re, you were here exactly one year ago today. I was. I'm telling you. I love this. Yeah, I was. We are going to have to make this a tradition, Mama. I would love that. Okay, you so know next I love year. you. You know, and I love you too. So you got to come here next year the same time and whatever. Um, yes. Y'all heard the invitation. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so when I look at you, because we're both on the view, I have to do my, my best Barbara Walters impression. Okay. If she, would, if she would say, so who is Sunny in 2024 compared to the Sunny Hostin in 2023? How would you answer that? If I'm being honest, the Sunny Hostin of 2024 is a hot mess. Okay. Um, it's a hot mess because my daughter is turning 18 tomorrow. Loma is turning 18. Yeah. Mm. And I'm about to be an empty nester. She's going to college in the fall. Oh, my goodness. And my friends are sending me grief articles for empty nesters. Oh, my God. So I just spoke to my friend Regina, and I said, why are you sending me this? And she said, because you're devolving. And I see it happening, oh. and I, I'm feeling Like, what's the it. feeling you're going through? I, Paloma, I remember Paloma when you she remember? was little. You remember? Yes, know. now she's 18, she's about to go away to a university. Yes, she so, is. So, like, what are you feeling? I feel sick. I feel <laughs> sick. Um, when my son left for college three years ago, I felt like I still got this one right here with me. Right. And so, and we bawled when we dropped him off at college. But see, I was bawling with her. Right. Now I'm bawling by myself. By yourself. And, and my husband, he's like planning trips to Mexico. He's like, mm, second honeymoon, baby. He's loving it. And I'm like, but... Are we doing the honeymoon with the kids or without the kids? No, your husband's like, no, no, no. fantasy freak off yeah, is about to happen. That, that is where Manny's mind is. He's like, this is gonna be great. We could walk around <laughs> naked. <I'm> like, <laughs> it is a feeling, because I know Jeffrey is 19, and I just feel oh. out the applications, and he signed them, and we're looking at him going off to college, too. And then when I tell you, I cried like a baby. You feel sick, right? I feel, feel sick. sick. I, but, I look, yeah. but I'm gonna tell you something, I'm single. If somebody was like, we gonna walk around naked, I'd be like, Jeffrey, you gonna be all right. <laughs> so, that's where we differ. So, <laughs> but now, Paloma is about to go off. Gabriel is 21, your son, yes, he's he 21. Yes, he is, 21. And he just, golly, <laughs> girl, what, y'all, I thought y'all was gonna show a picture of Gabriel when he was like seven. Good grief. Yeah. He didn't know single woman with pictures like this. Now, y'all were yeah. celebrating his 21st <laughs> birthday. You all went to Spain. We did, he gets a lot of attention, as you can tell. Yeah, uh, but he's a become such a, uh, a wonderful young man. He's a wonderful human being. And for his 21st birthday, I mean, for my 21st birthday, honestly, I did a bar crawl. I tried to make it to 21 bars. I made it to like three. <laughs> um, and so I'm just assuming he's gonna do that. He's gonna be with a group of friends. He, he calls me up and he says, Mom, you know, for my 21st birthday, I wanna go to Spain, which is where his father was born. Yeah. And he said, and I want grandma and grandpa and uh, Nenen, which is a godmother. Uh, I want Auntie Regina. I want... And I'm just looking at this human being like, wow. who are you? Like, yeah. So he wanted to just spend it with, cho he said chosen family and family and the closest of friends. So a group of us were in Ibiza, uh -huh. when my husband would pronounce it, and 
It was just an incredible, incredible time. Like he, so it was just family and I'm, friends. Yeah, and I'm really proud of the, the, the young man that he has become. Oh, that is so yeah. sweet. He's incredible. This is, so, and I love how you love Gabriel. I adore him. He's so, and he's just, you know, he's brilliant, but he's not like weird brilliant. You know, yeah. he's like just a brilliant guy. He's at Harvard. He's trying to change the world. He's, he's, he's like both of my kids. They're I could have not have dreamt them up. Well, you, know? you did a really good job, oh, and I know that you. with Gabriel. Thank you. I know with this Gabriel, you told you 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 joked about Anna. You wanted him to get with Anna. Anna Navarro. thinks he's real hot. I, well, let me tell you something. I'm single too, and I think he's real hot. So come, come on over, Auntie Sherry. So I was just talking about how I like older men, but I like chest, hard chest too. That was in Ibiza. That was his. Um, that was his 21st birthday. You know, it's so I love seeing you, and I love hearing about the kids as they're getting older and what you're doing. <laughs> and I got to see you at the Wiz premiere. We were yes. both at the Wiz premiere and we it was so good much, it was so good so good it's candy so good. Oh. and i did not know this i mean i knew this andy cohen sat in front of you and he sat behind yes, me so he's yes. between us both but i did not know that he talked about us on his radio show did he Ta yes take a listen to what andy cohen said about us i went to see the Wiz the other night opening night i was sitting in front of Sonny Hostin from The View mm -hmm. and behind Sherry Shepard. And it was so funny because I could hear Sherry's conversation with her people and Sonny's conversation. The three of us were all having the same conversation with our people, which was, who was that that just came up to me? Who uh -huh. was that? Tell you. Now, Sonny, I have an excuse because I have something called prosopagnosia, which is oh. like facial blindness. Oh. So I don't, like when people, I only see what I see is a nose, a mouth, and two eyes. There's oh. nothing specific that makes me remember who the person is. Okay. So that's why I couldn't, I didn't know who mm. was coming up to me. Now, I don't, what was your excuse? Well, well, I think we have similar excuses. I am too vain to wear glasses. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that, that will do it too. I can't see the teleprompter. I can't see the cards. The other day, Joy gave me her reading glasses and was like, come on, girl, just give it up. I just, I just you know, my husband's younger than I am, and I'm just, I'm just trying to keep up at this point. So I can't, I, it was dark, and I can't yeah. really see. So what people didn't see is when the lights went down, my glasses went on. And you I put could, your glasses I on? I can see everything, but I can't see anything. Yeah, I know, so everybody. I can't blew. believe I'm telling everybody that. What? Well, you not already told everybody? It comes everybody. with age. It comes with age. I'm 55. We hi oh, well, go on, welcome to the neighborhood, girl. Yeah, All right, 55. then. And look amazing. Oh, thank you. And, and, and speaking of you looking amazing, you attended the White House Correspondents' Dinner last weekend. I did. And look at the dress <laughs> you wore. This is not... I don't know if this dress is Democrat or Republican. I don't know what it is. You know... I, but you looked amazing in it. Thank you. You know, I'll tell you, um, it was, I wasn't sure if I should wear it because so many people, when you get older, you know, like, they tell like you, no. that's too young for you. And my stylist, Fran Taylor, who is amazing, yes. you know, Fran, she said, how are you feeling? I said, I feel like it's the end of days. I feel like the world is coming to an end. I feel like our democracy is on the precipice of falling over. So I want to <laughs> wear, I want to wear, like, Red Wedding Game of Thrones. I want to <laughs> wear, like, something like that. And so she picked this Rick Owens dress for me, and, and I was oh. a little nervous about it. I had a ponytail that was 33 inches. Down your back. Done, done by my, my hairstylist, Matthew Yates, and literally, I walked by Billy Porter. Uh -huh. And he says, Sonny, Sonny, turn around for me. <laughs> so I turned around, and I bowed at him, and he said, you won. <laughs> <laughs> you won. Now, when Billy Porter tells you you won, you want, then you I picked the right dress. <laughs> that was the right dress right that there. That was the dress for the White House. They needed to see that at they the White House. They needed to see that. I'm telling you, there's new blood in town. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to congratulate you. You got this new book you got out. You don't stop, Sonny. It is Thank amazing. You. It's called Summer on Highland Beach. Thank you. This is your third novel. It is. And it's a third novel of a best-selling series. So yeah. what what is Summer on Highland Beach now? Well, you know, I write about historic I write historical fiction. Yes. So I write about historically 
back, uh, black beach communities. It's yes. a federal designation, HBBC, much like HBCU. Right. Um, and I just felt that so many people didn't know that Frederick Douglass in the late 1800s had a summer home, which really was a respite from the scourge of racism right. that he, um, you know, was experiencing, was, was experiencing yeah. at the time. And his son was there, and they started this place called Highland Beach. And you can actually go and see his home because it's been turned into a museum. Really? And you can look out over the bay, which he looked out at, from where he was formerly enslaved. Oh. And it's just such a magical hamlet. Now, you can't really go there because they don't have any Airbnbs and they've kept it, a, 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 no hotels, you know. Yeah. They've kept it this special gem. And it's sort of generational wealth that you rarely see in the African-American community. Mm -hmm. And you had people like Paul Dunbar and W.E.B. Du Bois. And so I've sort of picked this, this place because it's very special to me. My friend Erica has a home there, family home. And then I throw in what I usually throw in. I throw in some hot sex. Ah! I throw in some scandal. And I throw in, you know, some spice. Um, I like it's this. It's almost like, you know, I want people to know this history. And it's almost like when you're trying to get your kids to eat asparagus, you put a little honey and a little put of nuts on it. And you bet so, you pat it. And so I'm, I'm patting my beach reed with with real American history, and we're losing our American history, but if you read my book, you will learn something you will that learn you don't it. know. And be entertained. And I like that yeah. this is good. I ride the train a lot, so I'm on the yeah. train reading. But I want you to, because you're writing so much, like, yeah. I want you to write, like, an erotic thriller, Sonny. Oh. That's what I want. I want an erotic thriller with somebody trying to kill a woman who's hot flashing all the time. <laughs> and, but yet, she can't see her killer, but they have hot sex. Like, they have hot sex. And I need her to be of certain. And then she likes, and she sees a younger boy, okay. of her, younger son of her friend, uh -huh, and then they get uh -huh, together. Uh -huh. And then they have the hot in, in uh -huh. Ibiza. Uh -huh. They go to Ibiza, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, like well, that. Well, I can tell you that I am writing a new series. Oh, you are? It is uh, tentatively called The Yellow Coven. What's that? And it is a book about a coven of witches. Ooh. Black witches. Black witches. Black witches. And I'm gonna put you in that. Oh, you are, girl. Yes, I That's am. That's what I'm talking. Yes, I am. Call me hot flashing witch. Yes, That's what I, I want to be. I mean, you know, my my books are now going to be made into TV C TV series with Amazon. Oh, I love that. So you'll see that next year. And um, since I have an audience of people, would you play a part in the Yellow Coven? Girl, yes, of course I would. All right. I'm an actress. All right. I act. <laughs> All right. Done. I know how to act. Done. I, I have witnesses. You. Yeah, I love you so much, girl. You are just, it is. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Y'all watch Sunny Houston on The View weekdays on ABC, and her book, Summer on Highland Beach, is available on Tuesday, May 28th. We'll be right back. Sunny Houston. <laughs> Jerry will be right back. It's about following trends, it's about making them your own. And today, we are diving into a fashion challenge that is taking TikTok by storm. So it is called the 333 Challenge. And here with me with some styling tips is fashion expert, Kathy Buccio. <laughs> Kathy. Now, I've always, I keep hearing about this challenge. Yes. What is the 333 Challenge? Okay, so the 333 Challenge went viral on TikTok, someone yeah. named Rachel Spencer, she's on to something here. Right. And essentially is we are gonna fit everything we're gonna wear into a carry-on, right? We're yeah. gonna do it, people, we're gonna do it using nine pieces. So think okay. three tops. Three tops. Three bottoms. Three bottoms. Three shoes. Three shoes, that's and it. And that's it, we're gonna be light packers, but we're not gonna sacrifice our style. We're gonna be functional, we're gonna be smart packers. Okay. Yes. All right, so Kathy, yes. we're gonna go through nine pieces of clothing that you chose. Why did yes. you pick the, the clothes that you picked? I wanted to cur curate a, a, an edit that was very classic, Sherry. Okay. Right? So I wanted to do a spring wardrobe that was also gonna take us into summer, pieces that you're gonna wear. Right. Again, so let's start with like your go-to tee. We love a go-to tee, a classic black and white tee like this one. Yes. Gap. I also packed a denim 
denim button down. This one's from TJ Maxx. And you know, I am all about the Cowboy Carter. Yes. So uh, the denim, all the <laughs> denim, give me that. So I think a great denim piece is key. And right. we cannot go wrong with our oversized blazer. A black blazer from yes. Target are going to make our three tops. That's now, when we three. talk about bottoms, mm -hmm. the essential denim. And it's spring and summer, so let's focus on a wash. And these are from Spanx. I love them because they're also body contouring. All right. I won't say no to that. We want a high-waisted wide leg trouser. A trouser is one of those pieces that you can basically wear with, with anything. anything. And yeah. these are from H&M. And of course, we need shorts. These are some classics from Loft. And I mm -hmm. love that they're khaki. I love they're a little longer. Now, let's move to footwear because it could all depend on the footwear. Yes. It can really change the vibe of an outfit. We want our platforms. I love a good platform from okay. spring and summer from Sam Edelman. We need some cool sneakers like I'm wearing right now. These are from Cute. Macy's. And the go-to shoe this season, the It Shoe, there was one is the Mary Jane flat. These are from yes. Steve Madden. We've seen them everywhere. We're going to see them on our models. And believe it or not, Sherry, I made 11 outfits. You made 11 outfits. I made 11 things. outfits using a nine. And I'm counting myself as well. I am the 11. You're the 11. Okay, I'm having a hard time <laughs> believing this, but Kathy, we're going to... Yes. All right, so now it's time to see the looks that all our models are wearing, which is a different combination of our 333 three, three pieces. And you, like you said, you yes. weren't... You, this is the 11th piece right here. So, okay, let's see what... Okay, let's see more of the looks. So come on out. It's Chadia, Christy, and Jamila. Come on out with your look. Break down these looks. <laughs> okay, so they look fabulous. And this is what I love about these pieces, Cher. I love that this edit can really take you from something that's dressier to something that's more casual. Right. Right? So let's start with Jamila's look. Jamila's look has a power piece. I call okay. it the power piece, the blazer. And we paired it over the button-down denim. Okay. And we gave her look shorts, right? And yes. it really like sort of spruces up that short look. And again, the shoes, the Mary Jane flats, it sort of puts this whole Very outfit cute. together. I really love how she styled this. Now, the our second model, we have Christy. We talk again about that blazer, but paired with that go-to, that classic top. Yes. It's great, because she can go from, let's say, a summer Friday at the office, mm -hmm. and then she can go out, maybe catch some dinner with friends. And we gave her some platforms to go with, with the, the Spanx jeans because yes. if you see the wash, but let's also remember we want to have a jean that's going to show off our shoes, right? Okay. We want to show off a little bit this spring, yeah. right? So this is what we did with her look. And Shadia, I love Shadia's look. I, I mean, first of all, I can see myself wearing Cute. all these looks, but I love the trouser paired with the classic black and white mm -hmm. tee. And we used the denim that you just saw here. Yes. We used it as outerwear. Okay, Notice that we kind of threw yeah. it over the black and white tee. And then we gave her the sneakers. The sneakers to sort of give the look. But what's great about these looks is that she can actually wear that with a platform or a Mary Jane. Right, exactly. Okay. Absolutely. So, And I love this because I thought this was it. You made seven more <laughs> outfits with the same piece. I did. Can the rest That's of the models up. come out with the seven more outfits? Come on out, y'all. So we got Melissa, Hannah. We got Bing. We got Taylor, Vanessa, Posey. Oh, my gosh. And Lauren. Are you so mind blown? You, what? Take, get, break the, what happened here? Are you mind blown? Can I'm you believe mind it? mind blown. Yes, 11 outfits. And I want to just highlight a couple more because there's so much more that we can go. So I want to bring up, I'm going to go here. I'm going to show okay. you. I'm going to bring Lauren. She is looking so effortless and cute. Again, Very we saw the cute. jean top is outerwear paired over the stripes with the shorts and the it girl, the Mary Jane flats as yeah, well. So I right love her look. Love it's so it. casual. Then okay. we got what I call the downtown Come look. Come up here, Posey. Yeah. Posey, I give her the, the downtown vibe, right? We gave okay. her those high-waisted trousers. She's got to run errands, right? We got to drive all over the city. She's got her sneakers on, but now you're seeing the top I love as this. a shirt. Yes, all I right. love it. Okay, what else do we got? I want to bring my girl Melissa because I love a shirtless blazer, Sherry. Yes, so do I. It's fun. Now, if we want her going to the office, we're going to give her a little, you know, a little mm -hmm. cami, but we're not. We're going to have to take them pins we're out. We're going out. Ooh. We're yes. taking the top off, and we are styling it, again, with the jean, I love the silhouette of the jean paired with the platform here. We're giving her height, but we're also showing a whole different look. A whole nother look. A oh my goodness. Look. All of these looks, Kathy, I, I'm so, I am literally, I'm so blown away with all of these looks and you're the 11th look. I am 11th. Kathy, thank you so much. And thank you every, all of the models for being here. So for more info on these looks, go to cherryshowtv.com and we'll be right back. Oh my goodness. Look at this. We'll be right back. Good time, good time, good time. It's time to play Name That Star.
and I am here with Amanda from New York. Amanda. Woo! Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl. Now, Amanda, May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and you have 45 seconds to guess five AAPI celebrities right. correctly. So we're gonna put 45 seconds on the clock. Put your glasses on, Amanda. Here we go. All right, here we go. She knows her way around the office. She's never uh, talked Mindy about- Mindy Kaling. Mindy Kaling, all right. This Grammy-winning singer is known to have guts. Uh, she oh my gosh, Olivia Rodriguez. There you go. This uh, sexy actor hails from the islands of Hawaii. His superpowers will take uh, you to- Dwayne Johnson. No, oh, no, 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 no. His um, superpowers um, will take you to the oh deep Oh my God, of Jason the Momoa. Yes, this <laughs> mad dam has broken a fair share of glass ceilings. She works in a big white house. She'll tell Amala you we did. Harris. There you go. Now, this Scorpion King will tell you to be cool as he takes on the Titan Games. He oh, loves to ask you about Dave Wayne Johnson. Mm -hmm. All right. You've won a $250 gift card to Tally and Twine, the destination oh. for unique and luxury time pieces. And we'll be right back. Sherry, we'll be right back. comes from Phoenix, Arizona, and it was featured in People Magazine. Did you know there are close to 400,000 children in foster care in the United States? Well, foster parents Ryan and Sarah Centers made it their mission to help. So in 2022, they opened up a coffee shop. They named it Hanai. But this isn't just your typical coffee shop. It's way more. They aim to provide a support system for foster children by training them and giving them employment. And they say that a portion of all proceeds go to foster youth who are looking for their forever homes. Great work, Ryan and Sarah. And I cannot wait to visit for a cup of joe when I'm in Phoenix. So for more on the Center family, go to people.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. I hope something on today's show put a smile on your face. On Monday, actress and singer Vanessa Williams will be here. Plus, the winner of my Funny Over 50 contest, Juanita Lolita Mills, is in my laugh lounge. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye!